In this video you'll learn how we created the movement for the grasses and the plants for our 3D scene. If we take a look at a real meadow, you can see with normal wind speed just the long grasses are moving. And the shorter the grass is, the less it is moving. That means also for our 3D scene we just have to simulate the tall grass. So here I've opened up the blend file with all the plants which we have created before. And here I use the same trick as for the leaves of the trees. I've added a displace modifier and a displace texture and with an empty object I animated this texture. And you can see all the leaves of the plants are moving a little bit. And for all the small plants this is absolutely enough movement to have a natural look for your final scene. Just for the tall grasses this is not enough movement because they have to swing back and forth and because of that we have to simulate them. If we take a look in the weight paint mode you can see the displace modifier just affects the leaves of these tall grasses. So the stem of the tall grasses don't get thicker and thinner. Yeah, and for this I simply use the vertex group which includes just the leaves of these plants. Ok, I select all the plants and move them to the side and then I add a plane. In edit mode I use W subdivide to subdivide this plane and in the operator panel you can increase the number of cuts. And also I change the fractal value and you can see now we have this uneven surface. So this will represent the ground. As I have mentioned in another video, also for our meadow we will test the animation and simulation on a small example and if everything works right we will apply this to our big scene later on. But this I'll show in another video. Before we can use all the different plants for the particle systems we have to group all the different species in separate groups. That means I select all the plants of one species press Ctrl G and then you can type in a name in the operator panel. Ok and that I do for all the plants. We start with a small grass, so I select the ground, navigate to the particle settings and add a new particle system and this I name grass small. And also the particle settings I name grass small. Under type I choose hair, then I enable advanced, so we got a little bit more options here. Now you can see the hair particles are very rough so they are not straight as they should be. And this is because the force field empty object we have used for the grass and because of that I select all the plants and move them with M to another layer. And then you can see the hair is straight again. All the particle settings I leave as they are for now. I navigate to the render panel and here I enable group. And down below we can choose one group we have created before and here I choose grass small. And now you can see the hairs are replaced with the small grass. And this setting is using the group that means all the different models of this species and place them all over our ground. Important is that you have emitter enabled in this case so the ground will be also rendered. If you disable this option the ground will be invisible. That means if at some point your ground won't be rendered, check if this option is enabled. After that we navigate to the physics panel and here under size we can define the size of the grass. And with the random size value we can give every grass object a different size. After that I enable rotation, set the face value to 1 and also I can play around with the random value so every grass has a different rotation. And now you can see we have the grass all over the place and with different sizes and different rotations all the different plants are looking a little bit different. And under emission you can increase or decrease the number of the grass using the number value. So if you don't want the grass to grow everywhere you can create a vertex group so I switch to weight paint mode and paint on the surface. In the particle settings I switch to vertex groups and here under density I can add the new vertex group. And now you can see the plants are just growing inside this vertex group where I have painted on the surface. 
Also, you can add the group to the length, for example. That means everywhere we have painted with a lower value, the grass is a little bit shorter. And everywhere we have painted with a higher value, the grass is taller. Another way to control, for example, the length or the density is to use a texture. So switch to the texture panel and here click new. After that I switch to the texture settings. To show you this under type I just choose a procedural clouds texture. Adjust this texture with the ramp. And now down below under influence, for example, you can enable density. That means the density decreases on the black areas of the texture and increases on the white areas of the texture. And in this way, using UV mapping, you also can paint individual textures for the growing of the grass. Okay, but in this case, I delete the vertex groups and the texture. Yeah, and this is a basic setting for our particle system. Okay, now we have to add the other plants and we are all lazy people. So I add another particle system, name this grass tall. And here under settings, I click on this button so I can choose the particle setting from the small grass. That means all the settings we've done before for the small grass, we'll use for the tall grass. And then I click on the two button. That means this setting will be copied in the library. That means we can adjust this setting without influencing the setting of the small grass. That's very important. Up here I hide the small grass, so we can see the tall grass a little bit better. Then under render I change the group from the small to the tall grass. Then I adjust the size. Okay, now we want to simulate the grass. For that I add a wind and a turbulence force field. So the wind force field is blowing the grass in a certain direction. And the turbulence force field creates a little moving effect of the grass. With the selected turbulence force field under the physics settings, I set the strength to 5. And the strength of the wind force field, I leave at 1 for now. Now I enable hair dynamics for the particle system of the tall grass and play the animation. And you can see the playback is very, very slow. So I decrease the number to 10. Then we just have 10 grasses, but that's not a problem because here we can see the movement very smoothly. You can see the bending is a little bit too strong, so under hair dynamics I set the stiffness and the damping value to 2. To see the movement a little bit better I increase the strength of the turbulence force field and also I add a little bit more grasses. And now we can see one of the biggest disadvantages of this method to simulate the grass. And you can see some grasses are moving in a circle. And that is caused to the fact if one grass is moving above the middle line to the other side, the grass is rotating. And to avoid this, we have to increase the strength of the wind force field so the grass is keeping in one direction and don't move above the middle line. And in my case here, I increase the strength of the wind force field to 3. You can see the turbulence force field has nearly no effect on the grass and that's because we have to move this force field. And to animate this force field we use the same method we have used for the empty for the displays of the leaves of the tree for example or for the plants. That means we add a keyframe for location and on the different F curves we add the noise modifier as we have showed in an earlier video. So that means I won't show this again in this video. Just go back to the video before and you will learn it. Yeah, now you can see the grass is moving much better. Now I want the full meadow, so I increase the number to 1000. And for smooth playback with such a high number of grass, we have to switch to the cache panel and bake this simulation. So also here I want to start the simulation a little bit before the actual animation is played back. So I set the start value to negative 50. So it will be calculated before the actual scene is starting. And so we avoid the strong movement of the grass when the scene is starting. Now I hit bake. Yeah, after the caching is done, you can see this grass is very nice simulated.
when I unhide the small grass, you can see it's moving very, very strong. And that's because of the turbulence force field. And because of that, I select the particle system of the small grass, navigate to field weights. And here I set the all value to zero. So no force field affects this particle system. So the problem is, unfortunately, the small grass has no movement right now because the original grass is on another layer with the movement and you have to enable this layer with the original grass so you can see the movement also on the particle instances. That means you have to put the grass somewhere in the background where you don't see it while rendering. Yeah, and using the same method we can add all the other plants. That means I add another particle system and use the settings from another particle system we already have set up. Then I change under render the group. Then I adjust the settings and with some vertex group we can adjust some of the plants that they just are growing in some places on the ground. After adding all the different plants we have a nice looking meadow. And after you've baked all the different simulations you can see we can play it relatively smooth. And the great thing is, after you've set up all the different particle system once, then you can simply use these particle systems for other objects. For example, here I've added a UV sphere, then I add a new particle system, and from the library under settings, we can choose one of the already set up particle systems. And now you can see with one click, the grass is growing on the sphere, and certainly you can adjust the settings here. Also think on copying the settings if you want to have the same particle system on different objects where you want to use different settings. Yeah, now we have a grass ball. One thing you have to consider, if you want to use hair dynamics, you have to enable this every time again, set up the settings again and also bake this again. And also this is great because if we set up all these particle systems here in this asset file, we can simply copy these settings directly to our final scene, so we don't have to set up everything again there. But this we'll learn in another video. Yeah, in the process finding a nice way to simulate the grass, we have also found another solution. The great thing about this method is that the grass is really bending and also you can use collision objects to really affect the grass. But sadly it's very hard to place the objects on the hairs and you need a lot of compute power to simulate the grass. So that means this is just usable in a very small restricted area. To show you this I open up my plants file again, select one of the tall grasses and with M move it to the second layer. And using Alt-G I reset the position so the grass is exactly in the middle of our scene. Also using Ctrl A apply rotation and scale so that everything will work right in the next steps. Then I add a plane, add a particle system with the hair settings, strongly decrease the number of the particles and then I select the tall grass object and add the particle instance modifier. Under object I select the plane down below you can see the option particle system and this is set to 1. That means the first particle system on the plane will be used for affecting this modifier. If you have more than one particle system on the plane, you can set the number to the particle system you want to choose. Now you can see the cross is doing some crazy stuff up there. Because of that I enable the checkbox create a long path. That means the grass will be deformed along the hair particles, but still the rotation is wrong. So I set the pivot point to 3D cursor and then in edit mode I can rotate the grass in the x-axis negative 90 degrees. And now you can see the grass is growing correctly. Down below we have the random value. With this you can set a random length to the grass. Unfortunately what we can't do here is to add a random rotation, which is very important if you want to create a meadow or something like that. But this option exists, but not in an official release of Blender. If you go to builder.blender.org download, you can download a Gooseberry version of Blender 
and there we have this option. So you also can use random rotation here. So this is one important disadvantage if you use the basic version of Blender. Another disadvantage of this technique is that we can only use one grass object for one particle system. So before we have used three or more objects for one particle system, which were placed randomly on the ground. And to achieve this while using this method here, you have to add several particle systems and several of these particle instant modifiers. If you want to change the general length of the grass, you can switch to the particle system and under emission hair length, you can change the length. Then I enable hair dynamics. So and if I play back the animation and move the ground, you can see the grass is bending. Now as before I add a turbulence force field and a wind force field, set up the stiffness and the damping for the particle system. And if I hit play, you can see the movement is way more natural, so it looks way more realistic. So and if I add a cube, for example, and under physics I enable collision, and if I play back the animation and move the cube through the grass, you can see it really has collision and the grass collides on the cube. So another disadvantage of this method, when I add the stinging nettle, for example, and move the cube through the grass, you can see when the stinging nettle is bending very strong, it gets really flat. And this also does not look very realistic. Yeah, you can see we have several disadvantages. Also, if the simulation looks great. And also you can see here, if I set up a very high number of particles, the playback is extremely slow. So here I show you some tests we have made using this particle instant modifier. In this case, I've added some trees instead of the grass. So using a very strong wind force field, the trees are bending in the wind. And also we've tried this method for the branches for the trees. And you can see with very low wind strength, this also looks quite good. But I think if you compare both methods on the tree, the other method looks nearly the same, but the calculation is much faster. Yeah, and with these methods, we can simulate and animate the grass in our 3D scene.